Hi, my name is Dan, and this video is one in a series of videos that I'm doing about AI in Unreal. Um, and in this one, I'm going to show you how to create a character that you can use to be controlled by an AI character. Uh, so I've just got the standard third-person template here uh, with nothing added yet. Um, and in fact, we probably could just use the, uh, the third-person character, which is... Uh, the one that's in the scene here. Uh, but um, I'm going to show you a little bit about how to create your own. A warning, this is the very basic level, and I'm using every, lots of stuff that's already created. I'm not rigging a character. I'm not doing the animations. I'm just putting the components together that's needed for a character. So the first thing I'm going to do is, um, this is uh, the start of uh, a whole lot of stuff we're going to do on AI. Um, I'm going to create a new folder in the contents area just to hold everything and um, I'm gonna have a I'm gonna call it stalker because eventually through the series of uh, videos I'm gonna create a, a kind of weird stalker type character um, so um, it's a good idea to have uh, your assets ordered in a sensible fashion um, I like to keep the assets that I've created separate from the assets that have come with the project and also separate from the starter content so that I know what's what. Um, it's also a good idea when you're creating assets to use a prefix of, of the names so they're easier to find when you get drop down uh, lists of uh, things, etc. Um, so in here I'm going to create a blueprint class and uh, it's going to be derived from the character. So the character itself uh, is a kind of pawn uh, so that already um, inherits from the from the pawn class higher up, but there's a whole lot more extra stuff there to do with the character movement. Uh, so I'm going to call this, I'm going to use the prefix uh, STLK underscore uh, character. Um, so I'm going to open that up. You'll see there's already some components in here. Uh, there's a capsule component and an arrow component, and there's a mesh component that's been created, but it hasn't actually allocated a mesh. And what we need is a skeletal mesh, uh, so that's different from a static mesh in that it's got internal movements and you can assign uh, uh, animations, etc., to it. Uh, there are a couple of skeletal meshes in the starter content, uh, which are the um, SK Mannequin, which is the one that's used in the standard third person character. Not the, Character that you want to run around with, and they've got a female equivalent here. So, just to show that it's different, I'll use the female equivalent. Okay. And still with this mesh component highlighted here, um, I'm going to find the, um, uh, the animation section here, which is just here, and I'm going to plug in the third person animations that have already been created uh, just to make my life so much easier. Uh, so, that's here, it's the third person animation. Okay, so um, that's pretty much it, except I just want to make sure that the character's in the right place, because if I uh, stick that in the world, it's not facing the direction of the arrow, which is meant to be the direction that it's facing. And also, um, it's going to be floating quite high above the ground, uh, because it takes the bottom of the collision capsule as being the place where the ground is. So I'm just going to drop that down. I'm going to get to roughly, is that right? Yeah, well, we'll see. Actually, I'll deliberately bring it up a little bit just to show you. Uh, so it's 90 degrees, right? So saving profile. And we need to stick one of those in the world. And um, you notice when I first stick it in the world, that, let's do that again and show it. As I drag it in, whilst I'm still holding, uh, she's kind of up to her waist in the ground, but when you let go, she jumps up and is. Because um, the collision capsule uh, controls where she is. Uh, and I deliberately put this other feet slightly up in the air just to show you that uh, we have to actually get that right. Um, so let's select it. I've got the mesh selected, yes. And go back to that and drop it down one more profile and see how that is. Now we're off feet still above the ground, right? And it's got slightly further down again. Um, and drop one more and test that out. Um, 
So there she is. She, her toes are kind of embedded in the ground. We could do, maybe do slightly better than that, but I'm not too bothered. Um, and uh, so the next video, I'm going to show you how to create the base controller class that we're going to use the AI controller to control this character. Uh, but that's it from me for now. Mm -hmm.